Make a joyful noise to the Lord. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. Good morning, Christians. Welcome. Today is Music Sunday, where their title is A Joyful Noise. As you will see, we have a very large book in front of us here today. Um, it's a book of music on loan from the public, Norfolk Public Library. And if you'd like to know more information about this book, please feel free to see Mr. Sean Bilby, and he will tell you everything you would like to know about it. <laughs> if you are a guest with us today, welcome. Please take a look at the upcoming events. There are many ways that you can be involved in our church. Please see where you best can fit in and again, be a part of us. Today, after our service, we will hold our church fall conference. If you are not a member and you would like to leave, please do so after the benediction during the postlude, although I'm sure the postlude is gonna be wonderful, so you might wanna stay for that as well. Their flowers on the pedestal are given in love and memory of Joseph and Ellen Louise Pierce and Dr. J. Michael and Margaret Nemish, given by the family. join me for the call to worship. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, his truth endureth to all generations.
us pray. O oh Lord, we went to your house today to sing your praise. We offer our songs of adoration, our songs of thanksgiving, and our songs of just pure love for you. Be in our midst today as we worship you in song. Be with us that we will make that joyful noise, no matter the sound of our voice. Because we know that one day when we all get to heaven, that there will be many, many voices singing in one holy praise. We just ask that today, as we worship together in song, that we can just glimpse one second of what heaven will be like. Now join us in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory be seated. October's mission emphasis is Meals on Wheels, so we ask that you continue to support that. I think we would be remiss if we didn't look at a part of our vision which says, because we love Christ, we worship. And we know that when we come into this holy place, we worship God through song. So I would like to thank our talented musicians, Mary, Janet, and Sean, and to the choir for always leading our church in music. It's often said that our church has a great music program, and people often tell us how much they miss the whole choir being up here. But it doesn't mean that we can't sing throughout the week, and it doesn't mean that we can't sing from where we are. I would also like to invite you to join the choir. I'm sure Janet would love to have more members. Even if you come for a Sunday and try it out, see if you like it, I'm sure the choir would welcome anybody that could come and do that. So our vision, because we love Christ, we worship. And today, let's continue our worship through song. Please join me in our unison offertory prayer. O oh, merciful God, your hand is always open to satisfy the needs of every living creature. Make us ever thankful for your loving providence and grant that we may be faithful stewards of your bounty. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good morning. See if I can. That was very sad. Let's try that again. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much. Okay. So, what are some things that come in threes? Anybody know? There are the three stooges. There are the three musketeers. What? Three the three amigos. That would work. We have the three blind mice. Three munchkins, okay, that could work, okay. Okay. Okay, count by threes, they are in groups of three. 
So one thing that we talk a lot about in church that's a group of three is what? Anybody know? McKenna said it earlier in Sunday school. What is it? That's right. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So one thing that comes around in Halloween time is something that comes, I guess, in a group of three is candy corn. Now, Miss Phoebe loves candy corn so much. <laughs> so we have candy corn. And I also have these little tags for your book bags. And it says, as there are three colors in the candy corn I see, there are three persons in the Holy Trinity. God, our loving Father, Jesus, the Son, and our Helper, the Holy Spirit. All three are God, yet together they are one. So y'all can put these on your book bags or your lunchbox and you can wear them to school this week because what's next Sunday? Halloween, really? Oh my goodness, y'all were talking about it earlier in Sunday school. You know it's Halloween. Next Sunday is Halloween and we are going to have a very special Lambs Club meeting and we might even have a special guest. I know, y'all can see their faces. We might even have a special guest. So when we go to um, Children's Church, you're going to have a few candy corn, not too many, right? A few candy corn. Don't worry, parents, I got your backs. A few candy corns. A few candy corns, and I will leave some outside of Miss Priscilla's office, so if anybody wants to grab some, just remember of the Holy Trinity. All right, we're going to sing our Lamb's Club song. In regards to people updates, we are happy to report that Pat Bristow is home and getting stronger. I also ask you to look over our prayer guide for the week. There are many here that need our prayers and would really appreciate those. Also make sure that you're looking at the front of that as we transition and just different ways that you can pray for our church. Oh God, we come into your presence with our hearts full of so many things, so many things that life throws at us. But now, in the stillness of this time, we ask you to hear our thoughts and to hear our personal prayers. Lord, on this day where we make a joyful noise, we lift up to you our national, state, and local leaders. We ask you to give them guidance, give them wisdom. We also lift up our service men and women who are away from us and those that are here. We pray for the families that miss them and pray for them. We pray for our health care workers and all those that serve in that capacity. We ask you to give them strength as they do the job. 
Lord, we lift up our educators and our students and our schools. There's so much going on in our schools, Lord. We just ask you to, again, give leaders wisdom and the grace that they need to do their job. And God, lastly, I lift up our church as we are anxious, as we await on all that you have planned for us in the future. We ask you to give us peace in your way because we know your way is the best. And we know we must seek your guidance in this transitional time. We thank you for your faithfulness to Suffolk Christian Church. And just help us to continue to be a beacon on Main Street. I'll be giving an introduction to two of our songs, this one and then near the end. Did you know that the scripture was going to be a song? Let's go way back. Uh, in ancient times, whether it was the Hebrews or the early church, oftentimes the scriptures were sung. And it didn't matter whether you were in Jerusalem or in Constantinople or Ethiopia or in Rome. It would have been sung, but a lot of different ways. In the early Middle Ages, Pope Gregory the Great had sent missionaries to a number of places throughout uh, Europe, and one of his, the great things that he was praised for by both Calvin and Martin Luther was standardizing worship and writing the songs that we know as Gregorian chant. In Gregorian chant, often the choir would sing and then the organ would respond back and forth. The emphasis was on the words and, and melodies that uh, Pope Gregory had written. And those have endured to this day, whether it was in monasteries or even with congregations singing along. It got complicated, this music, as music got complicated. And instead of just having maybe one person sing or everyone singing in unison, there might be four-part harmony, there might be 20-part harmony or more. Okay, well, the Puritans didn't like all that harmony going on. They didn't like a lot of things, so they stripped all that away during the uh, English uh, Reformation and simplified things. Well, still out of that, a lot of polyphony, a lot of multiple notes and things came along. And I'll point out that the large book here is a book of music. It's so large so that a choir could sing wherever they were standing and still see it. And uh, out, of, out of all of this came, for example, Anglican chant, which often had the organ playing along with the chant. So this morning's scripture is from Luke the first chapter, it is called the Song of Mary or Magnificat, the first word in Latin for this. And I will be uh, giving you the scripture using a plain song, tone one, out of the Book of Common Prayer. And incidentally, the word Magnificat shows up as the rubrics, the part in red here at the lower column. So it's not in this book, but it says, okay, now's the time to sing the Magnificat. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away. 
He, remembering his mercy, hath hope in his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
Why We Sing. Tony Bennett, the last of the original interpreters of the Great American Songbook, is now 95 and a national treasure. He's been making music and entertaining audiences for over 70, excuse me, seven decades by now. A recent 60-minute segment was about his, his Alzheimer's disease and his final concert this summer at Radio City Music Hall. In typical fashion, the great crooner gave a masterful performance and had to be pulled off the stage when it was time for lights out. Now, with Alzheimer, his speech is slow and he is often vacant. He sits quietly while his wife, Susan, answers for him. He remembers her name, the names of his children, but not much else, even what he did yesterday. Yet, when the music starts on the piano, the showman is back. He's Tony Bennett again, singing song after song from memory without notes, cue cards, or sheet music. He didn't miss a note. Music is the last thing to go, it seems. There's a place in the brain, even a tragically diseased brain, where songs exist and long endure. Lyrics and melodies from our coming of age years persist there. When names and experiences can no longer be recalled, it will be the melodies that linger on. What will be the music that you remember when you can no longer remember your name? Will it be Christian music? Will it be the old hymns you learned as a child? Choruses sung in children's choir or Sunday school? Will it be songs from a cantata or a children's musical? They are there, somewhere deep in the soul and brain, perhaps coming out as phrases that we might sing or whistle. The lyrics can bring tears or smiles just when we need them most. Good music has a way of sticking with us and bad music too, I suppose. So it's best to put in the good music while we are young. So sing and make melody in your hearts to the Lord. Ephesians 5:19 says that. Sing and make melody in your heart to the Lord every chance you can now. So it will be there for you when you face the darkest moments in your life. So deep in your heart, it's really a part of you. Please stand for our next hymn, Standing on the Promises.
We'll give you a moment to catch your breath. <laughs> the story about victory in Jesus, this is excerpts from a work written by David Yardley and BackstorySongs.com in 2019. You, Jim M. Bartlett, was born in Missouri in 1885. He was a singer, and as a publisher, his hymn book was in demand. It sold over 15,000 copies across the country. He felt that his calling was to publish hymns and teach aspiring singers how to sight read, so he traveled the South holding singing school and singing conventions. But in 1939, at age 53, his world changed drastically. Mr. Bartlett suffered a paralyzing stroke that left him unable to walk or speak, and for the most part, he was bedridden. Many felt the stroke ended his teaching ministry, yet it was during these dark days that Eugene would write his best-known hymn, Victory in Jesus. He began with the following words, I heard an old, old story how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. Realizing that the love of God has sustained him and brought him to where he was that day, he is quoted as saying that he felt the prompting of the Holy Spirit to add another verse. He wrote, I heard about his healing of a saving power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. When he completed the song, he looked back over it and saw it was a story of redeeming power from start to finish. He wanted the song to be joyous, and while written during the darkest period of his life, he chose to make the melody full of happiness and enthusiasm. Since he was no longer able to travel to minister, his son, Eugene Jr., took over and traveled around the South, continuing his father's ministry. One night, he was in East Texas for a revival service. There was a well-known revival, uh, revivalist and evangelist at the time who was speaking, and though he gave a wonderful, powerful, spirited sermon, when the invitation came, no one came down. Eugene Jr. said he felt that the Lord was urging him to sing his father's new song. It had never been sung publicly or published. He did, and as he did so, many in attendance were moved and came forward to give their lives to Jesus Christ. In the end of the service, more than 50 men and women had given their life to Christ. So often when we are going through a dark time in life, we naturally get focused on the problems of our circumstances and lose sight of what really matters. We lose our hope and our joy. But in the midst of Eugene's troubles, he found he could, be, he could still say, there is victory in Jesus. Let us stand and sing now, victory in Jesus.
May we leave this church today proclaiming God's victory and sharing our songs of praise and adoration for him and take them from this church and into the world. Amen. <laughs>